Hello everyone. So let us have uh, a discussion and uh, not just a discussion. I just want to share something and uh, hopefully it will uh, help you. Now in Jira, of course people create a plan and I fail to understand for some reason there are few topics that uh, are not very obvious to everyone, especially if uh, many people can uh, talk about it or share how they do it. I think it will help a lot of people. And I think uh, there should be uh, maybe some guidance or some kind of uh, best practices or maybe uh, in a way, if not, be if not best practices, some use cases on how to scope in Jira. Now, th this is not very clear because uh, there is no such feature in Jira to define a scope. Maybe there uh, could be a feature like that. Now, when I talk about scope, scope is actually very important because uh, in a way, whenever you do, uh, whenever you're doing anything in Jira, you are in a way working on a scope. For example, let us say you're doing software development, right? In that case, you do have a scope. That scope could be, first of all, why do you need a scope? I mean, you need you may need a scope if you are working maybe let us say in a time frame or maybe if you're if you're trying to release something or maybe you have a team uh, and that particular team has some capacity so scope will come back to you if you are managing something again and again you will be asked this question what is my scope now first of all you need to define what exactly is a scope for you as I just mentioned, scope could be based on the delivery, scope could be based on time frame. And once you have that clarity, there are multiple ways of doing it in Jira. And unfortunately, there is no such clear defined way to uh, say that, okay, th this is my scope, because maybe that is not needed, maybe, uh, maybe it is needed, but there is no like clear uh, definition of a scope feature wise, you can do it. But for new Jira users, they struggle and they, of course, you know, uh, use what whatever they think is the right thing to do, which is fine. And that is where I think training also comes into into picture. Now, if you're talking about something which you have to release, then the answer is, of course, very simple. Use a fixed, ver fixed version. Now, the problem with this with this approach is because fixed versions are basically for re for leaving something. Now, now let us say you're a project manager, you have recently done some training and you have that certification, you will think that, okay, now I know how to manage projects. Maybe that is, <laughs> that is good, but I'm not really sure if uh, you should always rely on uh, a certificate or some training, you should always, you know, use your experience and skills. And of course, you know, use your training, whatever you learned, and then uh, think about the best way because there is no such thing like one best way of doing something, at least in Jira, because by design, Jira is configurable. So maybe it's a good thing, but uh, you probably need some help in some cases, if you're not really sure. And that is where I guess uh, I'm trying to help and you need, you may need uh, sometimes a consultant. So do, do ask someone who has been doing it. Now, as I just mentioned, scope may or may not be always uh, your release uh, because release is something that you release on a particular date and uh, usually fixed versions or releases usually in majority of cases they are basically for software based uh, releases and that works for majority of use cases but not for all the use cases now when we talk about scope because scope should not be and uh, scope is not uh, something that you can say very clearly that, okay, if my scope is uh, version one, then I will only do version one on that particular date, because you may have multiple releases. So maybe if you have multiple re releases within your, uh, let us say, quarter or PI or whatever time frame you have, then of course, you, your scope would be mix of or, or like multiple releases. And that can work. That is totally fine. And usually the people, the, the way people do it, uh, when, I, when I look at them, and I'm not really saying it is the right way of uh, doing it or wrong way of doing it, because to be honest, you can't really group your releases in Jira. There is no like grouping or 
like one more level on top of your releases but you can actually combine it with maybe a label that might work or maybe you can use any other field that might also work or maybe just uh, uh, create I guess a filter like where your filter would be equal to version 1 and version 1.1 that you will do and again re releases may or may not also mean deployment because you may release something to your develop branch but you may not deploy it uh, or maybe you will deploy it later on so release is again separate from deployment which in a way you can still track because whenever you are uh, in Jira whenever you have your version like code or smart commits enabled you can still see the status of your uh, PR right that that is fine that that can work and that can of, of course uh, because when you're when you're looking at the issue you can let us say when you're looking at an epic you can see that particular epic is part of maybe three releases and you can also see the, see the relevant deployment branches I guess that should work but it is not really like a thing here a thingy here that says okay define a scope so because you have to do it uh, maybe with the help of these filters or whatever now a scope if you're not really really th thinking about releases maybe your scope could be uh, as simple as a list of epics or stories or whatever you want to release and that can also work and again you still need to learn how to write your jql because you would rely on that jql and when you have a jql what you can also do is you can also always you know go back to your confluence page in case you're using confluence and then create a, like a page where you can say okay in this particular uh, release or in this particular scope i am going to do this these and these things now i'm just using the word scope here maybe you call it as something else uh, but th th these questions you need to ask yourself or whenever you're in a company joining there as someone who would be doing consultation around processes and maybe of course around uh, around around tools like jira and uh, if you're talking about uh, let us say uh, let, let us say a non-technical team maybe you're you're using jira for marketing right now that can also happen right i mean you can also use jira for business based projects in that case you may not always have uh, something called as a scope you may just have uh, like some big piece of work that you need to deliver and that big big piece of work could be maybe just a task with subtask or maybe an epic you can use an epic i think when you are i'll probably make a video on this whenever you're using epics or whenever you're thinking of rolling out jira you should not limit uh, these uh, issue types to only your uh, software based projects because epic do epics do have like that functionality where you can have items under it it works really nicely by the way and i guess uh, i think i made a video on this recently i think moving forward i atlassian will rename epic link to parent and parent link will be renamed to parent so you will basically be able to like have parents of one issue type uh, of another issue type and i guess uh, right now what you can do is uh, you can still use an epic and your epic could be your scope like for example i i, I remember i was working with a company who used to basically do marketing campaigns and they were using jira and their uh, scope because again i'm using the word scope here because they don't really have releases their scope was usually okay in, in the month of august we are going to work on this marketing campaign and that marketing campaign was basically their mini project in their big project and that mini project was nothing but an epic and you can of course and again this is also a question usually people ask should we use epics or should we create multiple uh, projects i think uh, there is no i mean you have to basically figure out in the beginning if you just have one team working on let us say in this case marketing campaigns then you don't really really need a separate project but if you're doing something significant like like a two year program or maybe you have multiple teams involved then you have you have to basically figure out whether you need to create multiple projects or uh, multiple projects per team for example if you're doing software development for android ios then it makes sense you should have like a android based project handled by a android team ios team will work on their own project something similar but 
if maybe you want to do it for one big project that you may have for your entire organization where you where all of you are working towards one common initiative but uh, but of course you know if you're not really sure ask and uh, hire a consultant uh, who can help you but in this video i just wanted to talk about uh, this uh, this part of uh, or this this concept or not a concept or not a feature called uh, scope and what is a scope why why you need a scope and how you can manage it hopefully i have given you some ideas if not ask me i'll try to answer you and also at the same time uh, uh, let me know do you have this thing called scope in your organization all right that is it that is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new thank you very much